I do want to get everyone's thoughts on Romeo. I know we tease a lot, you know, that Romeo is, uh, you know, is, is not real, but in fact, he was real. Now, in addition to his play, which again, you only have a little snapshot of it, so it's hard to say too, too much. What I did find encouraging is that his first game back off of the COVID conditioning thing, they wanted to get him in right away. And so he already leapt past, uh, you know, Neesmith in the, in, the, uh, in the rotation, which is not super surprising, but it certainly tells you something. But it was clear that they wanted to get him run. Brad even talked about, I'm giving him a couple stints tonight. So it wasn't a, he's cleared to play, go sit next to Neesmith and Taco. He was cleared to play with a design on him actually getting minutes. Uh, in, 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 with the design on him getting enough minutes to build up some stamina for hopefully what would be more meaningful minutes. So it leads me to believe prior to his COVID setback, they did have an idea that Romeo could come in and contribute in some way on this team or at least a desire to have him do so. Yeah, for sure. And we saw that. I mean, his defense is obviously the part that we all want to see unfold. We want to see him develop, but it's so frustrating because there's not a whole lot of time. I mean, just for him to get his legs back, I think it's going to take some time leading into the playoffs. And we're not quite sure if he's there development wise to keep up with some of the, you know, top talents or at least top tier teams. The Eastern Conference has got dramatically better over the past year. And Romeo hasn't, obviously. He's been sidelined. So it's a tough spot. I mean, it's a great glimpse of the future, I guess. It's still, we have to see more of it. But for him to come in with that sort of energy, the, the, the putbacks and the, you know, the, 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 what was it? The play that the block. The Bridges block, can jump, up. man. Yeah. Great. That was no I mean, joke. Like, yeah. That, he got that out of the way. Text, you know? That is text. Like, like for someone to do that has been out that long and, and come in your your first you know, minute, your first stint, it's it's impressive. And I guess it shows that obviously he hears the the, the talk that's going on around the city. And it looks like he's 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 developed maybe he's developed some thick skin over the past year or so, and he's ready to to, to prove himself to everyone. Yeah, everybody yeah. everybody was blown away by his defense coming into the league. That wasn't something people thought would be a strength of his game, and he's still continuing to flash that, uh, not only positionally, but, you know, with the dynamic athleticism to make a play like that, steal later in the game. That's what's going to get him into the rotation ultimately because there is an opportunity here between him, Neesmith, semi Ojale, eventually when he gets back as like a fourth forward spot. Not a ton right. of minutes there toward playoff time, but – like, it's not out of the question that if they can ramp him up conditioning-wise and he responds well to all of that over the final 20 games or so, you get more blowouts like this that he can in be inserted into the fourth. There's a chance, there's an outside chance that he can end up making the playoff rotation. Uh, but it's it's going to be an uphill battle for him for sure. Like, he's just so limited right now and there's so little time left that uh, it will be tough for him to, like, break into this in a big way. But tonight's a start. But there is, though, that's the thing is right now, and it's again, it's a perfect opportunity because Neesmith didn't make the most of his minutes, so he's not going to get him back, I don't think. Um, and Semi being out almost guarantees, even with the acquisition of Fournier, that Neesmith's going to get in. I mean, Neesmith, that uh, Romeo's going to get in there, I think, in this range of 12 to 15 minutes a game to start every game. I don't think you're going to get a, I'm hoping, I don't think you're going to get a, oh, he sits for the next two DNPCD and then comes in for five or six. If he does, then that probably means he's not in their plans. But if he's right back out there against Philly uh, on Tuesday, playing, again, those two stints, as Brad kind of pointed out there, which is roughly what you'll be looking at, a little second quarter and a little third into the fourth run, um, that is good enough to start, I think. And then you let him build off of that. If he goes away, that's rough. Again, it depends how long Semi's out there, but I don't think it's that hard, Bobby, to crack the rotation personally, because it, there's not much there. Uh, you're really only competing with who? Semi Ojale and Aaron Neesmith at that point. And that's well, I why I, Bobby's saying, like, I want to see him because his highest level of play, I think gives <clears> you at least the defensive Semi with some offensive potential um, to boot. And we'll see whether that's the case. Yeah, I mean, the greatest trick Romeo ever played was convincing the world he didn't exist, right? <laughs> that's, that's how that's the saying. And listen, he, he, goes that, out there, in your mind. he goes out there today, drains his first shot, you know, the three pointer, which was great to see him, you know, have a little bit of that. I know he missed the next three, but, you know, he, you know, he goes out there, confidence is, you know, a guy hasn't played in a year. I mean, he could have, he could have looked, he could have looked like Neesmith 2.0 out there, but he actually looked like he belonged. He was, cool, calm, collected, um, you know, he's, he, you know, was that player that, you know, the Celtics can put on the opposing team's offensive, offensive guy and see if he can slow him down a bit. You know, that's something that they lack. You talk about, you talk about Romeo and now Fournier, that's 40, 40 plus minutes now that you could potentially have 
uh, in this rotation that you didn't have a couple weeks ago. So, um, you know, that's huge for a potential, you know, push here to the playoffs. And, you know, in terms of depth, if the Celtics can actually stay healthy, they look a lot more like the team in last year's bubble, you know, playoff personnel wise, than they have sort of floundering through the first, you know, half plus of this, of this season. So, Anything you get out of Romeo is a bonus. I mean, if you're if you're talking about a guy that can give you 15 minutes off the bench, I mean, last week, John, I think you said, you know, a lost season for Romeo. So that's you know, the worry. Yeah, right. That's that's and that's the worry. Listen, we're not gonna we're not gonna you know go overboard here with with his debut, but you got meaningful minutes. You got something that resembled an NBA player, which is great. And if they can build on that, and if he can stay <laughs> healthy, because that's another guy that hasn't been able to stay healthy. If he can stay healthy then, you know, you've got an end of rotation sort of player there for the, well, for the playoffs. So that's that's all I was pointing out for today. Yeah. Is the, the the fear was when they were like, you got the vibe, didn't you guys? That like, they were like, you're not going to be seeing much of this guy when they're like, wow, you know, with the for reconditioning sure. stuff, the kind of feeling was like, I don't know what, if anything, we're getting from him. So I thought that ramp up might be, you know, those last few games where he's had the COVID reconditioning um, designation. I thought that could last two and three weeks. It looks like Thompson's still in it, you know? Um, so that was the worry there is that he might not even see the court for two weeks. The fact that he, on his first game cleared, he played, again, is the encouraging well, that's, aspect for me. Yeah, that's what, that's what I said about that fourth quarter, John. That's, that's the only way they can get him back into things. Like, they don't have practice time. And even if they did, you want him at game speed more than practice speed. So any chance that they can get to fit him into this rotation they're going to do it just because that's the only way he can get back into the fold here like those you know i'm sure stevens didn't love throwing him into the fire right away here but they had no other choice with how jam-packed these games are i'll say this too shemi ojale is expected to miss 10 games total i think he's already missed five so there'll be about five more games here maybe more if the injury continues to linger into that west coast trip uh, for langford to have steady run and be right, John. Right. There isn't a whole lot of competition there when you think of where Neesmith's done. Yep. Grant Grant probably isn't interchangeable with him because Langford gives you more wing versatility on the defensive side of the ball. So, like, the, the opportunity's here if he plays well over this yeah. next week. Well, week plus. well, that's the thing. You're right. Because now, right. like, you know, Brad, Brad theoretically has the personnel more suited to play the type of game that he likes to play, particularly defensively. Oh, it's beautiful. Particularly yes. defensively, when you've got a bunch of wings and that whole switchability thing, and I do think you know Romeo fits into that really well for him uh, if he can play. Because now that you have Fournier, you've now all of a sudden, I don't want to say it's wing depth. You've just added you've added Romeo, who hasn't shown anything yet. But like I said, is it allows you to do the things you want to do, whether or not he's capable. Is again what these next five, six, eight, ten games will show us, because you really do want him playing. At a, at a reasonable, reliable level when you, if, if and when you, you know, enter the playoffs.